and death. Somebody is saying in their heart, but I thought I heard that there are some demons that used to kill people. I thought I heard that there are some witches that used to lay, lay traps for people and destroy them on the way. I will show you how. Hi guys, this is the Mick Hansen and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. The good news is the fears you've had in your heart over time is about to be crushed by this message. I am convinced that if you tap into the revelation shared by Pastor David Oedipo in this sermon, your life would never be the same again. So watch and be blessed. Cheers. And death. Somebody is saying in their heart, but I thought I heard that there are some demons that used to kill people. I thought I heard that there are some witches that used to lay, lay traps for people and destroy them on the way. I will show you how. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 and verse 15. Look at what the word of God tells us here. It says, Hebrews chapter, chapter 2, sorry, verse 14 and verse 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. It tells us there, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood that is their flesh and blood he said he also took part of the same he came as flesh and blood that through death he may destroy him that had h-a-d past tense the power of death that is the devil so he doesn't have it again he used to have it before so how is he killing some people now verse 15 he said and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What keeps people tied to the enemy is the fear of death. Hear what the Bible said concerning Job. Job 3 verse 25. He said, the things that I greatly feared have come upon me. The things that I fear. It is fear that gives the devil capacity to kill anyone. It is fear. It is fear. He has given us the dominion over death. One of us was sharing this um, story at the WSF yesterday. Very, very striking. During COVID-19 pandemic, a particular person outside the country was tested and they said he has COVID. And as soon as he heard he has COVID, all his organs started shutting down. So they put him on a stretcher and rushed him into the ambulance. And as they got into the ambulance, one of the uh, paramedics just thought, let us use another test kit and test him again. And they tested him and discovered that he really didn't have COVID. And all his organs woke up again. And he jumped out of, the, out of the stretcher, left the ambulance and entered his car and drove back home. The same person. Now, there was no sickness, but fear came and death was following it. Is somebody getting what God is saying? When a person looks like they're about to have an accident, somebody inside the car says, yeah, what is happening? Fear has come. So death is giving room to knock. Is somebody getting it now? Say with me, I have dominion. <laughs> Say louder, I have dominion. <laughs> like your minute, I have dominion. <laughs> Some years ago, I was teaching and I began to tell the people about the contrast between Stephen and Paul. Stephen was stoned. Paul was stoned. Both were stoned for the purpose of death. One of them, after he was stoned, looked up to heaven and said, Lord, unto you, I commit my spirit. And the Bible says, he's laid down and he slept. Paul was stoned. He said, I don't commit my spirit to anywhere. They gathered around to try to bury him. He stood up because he refused to release his spirit. Now, hear this, I hear it very well. Your spirit cannot be taken from you. It is you that releases it. Is somebody getting it now? When Jesus was to die, what did the Bible say? He yielded up the ghost. He took his spirit and submitted it for the purpose of your redemption and my redemption. That's why he said, no man can take my life from me. A power to lay down. A power to take it again. So the question is this. Why will you lay down now? Where are you hurrying to? Where are you running to? I've decided that I will not join the bricklayers in heaven that are building mansions. I will finish my time here. 
and the time has been allotted except jesus comes it is 120 years the road is still long the road is still long the road is still long i refuse to go anywhere is somebody getting what god is saying no one can take your spirit no one can take your spirit so after teaching in that service one of us in the service had a particular crisis and she said she saw herself just going like this and she began to pray lord unto you i commit then she remembered he said lord i don't commit my spirit i take it back i don't commit it i take it back <laughs> i collect it shout hallelujah say with me i have dominion say louder i have dominion what does that mean fear must not be given any room fear must not be given any room don't imagine death don't accommodate the thought of death at every point in time speak life at every point in time speak life give no room to the accommodation of the thoughts of death keep speaking life shout hallelujah keep speaking life keep speaking life it doesn't matter what is going on around you it doesn't matter what the situation looks like keep speaking life that is the difference maker never allow any thought don't let it seep into your mind and when the devil tries to introduce it, speak life to reject it. Is somebody getting what God is saying? Speak life to reject it. You keep declaring it, you keep declaring it, and you keep subduing the power of death. I see that becoming somebody's experience from now. You believe it, say it loud, amen. I say you believe it, say it loud, amen. God servant, our father sharing in the first service talked about how he taught on the subject victory over death 1983 victory over death it taught, we, the light was palpable not long after that the enemy came to try and knock on the door with death but he subdued it by light when the when, when he was laying down there and everything looked like it was turning suddenly he said he heard a voice what are you doing here he said i don't know too he jumped out of the bed entered into the car and drove off he rode on the head of the devil shout hallelujah. hallelujah you see the truth is this the devil is not as powerful as he has been pretending to be he's not as powerful as he has been pretending to be there is practical victory and dominion granted unto us over the forces of death so let no one intimidate you in fact don't let the records and histories of the past intimidate you Oh, they say, oh boy, in this family, oh, uh, every, every few years, somebody, somebody used to die like that. Somebody used to die like that. Tell them it is minus me. My own, I have dominion. Is somebody getting it? I can't remember, I can't forget the testimony of a particular young man. At that time, it would be less than 25. In their family, they had a notorious man. The man calls people every year to tell them when is their turn to die. So the man this young man was outside the country and the man called him couldn't reach out to him so he sent somebody to call him and tell him that it's his turn <laughs> the young man fired back he said tell him that i said within seven days his first son is dead and after that he is also dead the one who was killing others died within that that set season why because he recognized that he had dominion don't let the enemy make you shake inside your shoes no you are loaded with heaven's dominion is somebody getting those who advance the kingdom in prayer are advanced by god in power those who advance the kingdom in prayer they are advanced by god in power luke chapter 9 verse 28 
and 29 as jesus was praying the fashion of his countenance was altered by verse 43 he said the people were amazed at the mighty power of god those who advanced the kingdom in prayer they are advanced by god in power that is why we must understand that the altar of prayer is not just an altar of answers but it's an altar of power god does not only give us answer in prayer god gives us power by praying so the more we stay in prayer the more we grow in power that is why we must become addicted to advancing the kingdom of god not just praying elementary prayers lord give me this lord give me that no advancing the kingdom those who show that who demonstrate their commitment to pushing the kingdom forward god pushes them forward in power shout hallelujah i said shout hallelujah i said shout hallelujah so we must become committed to standing in prayer every time you are praying for the lost you are praying for brethren in the church you are praying for your converts you are praying for your home cell you are praying for the church you are praying for your unit as you are spending time yes god is giving answers but god is also growing his power in you he's giving you access to greater dimensions of power that is the effect that is the manifestation when a nail stays beside a magnet it doesn't matter what the nail is doing by the magnet but because it is by the magnet it is a matter of time the power the magnetic power in the magnet begins to manifest through the nail is somebody getting it now just by reason of connectivity so it's not that you are just praying and asking for power but as you are praying advancing the kingdom god is advancing you in power you are growing in the magnetic field of god's power around you that will be somebody's experience from now Amen. number two is going after souls to the point of establishment it's another requirement that positions us into greater manifestations of the power of god and the anointing of the holy ghost going after the lost going after the lost is another vital tool if you look at what the bible tells us in luke chapter 9 and verse 1 it said jesus called the 12 and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases he gave them power and authority and he told them ahead i give you power and authority and they went and began to manifest the power in luke chapter 10 and verse 1 he said he appointed 70 also and sent them two by two to all the places where himself will come and this time he didn't even give them a clue of what has been done and the bible tells us in verse 17 the 70 returned again with joy saying even devils were subject to us with, through thy name even devils and jesus told them in verse 19 he said behold i give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you see jesus was making them understand as you are going for me you keep growing in power as you are going for me you keep growing in power every step you take as far as pursuing the loss is concerned is a step to increase in the dimension of power mark chapter 16 verse 15 he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature verse 17 he said and he that this sign shall follow them that believe and verse 20 as they went manifesting the instruction he gave he began to confirm the word with signs and wonders following so every time you're on the go keep reminding yourself it's another opportunity to grow in the manifestation of god's power so as we keep going we keep growing as we keep pursuing the lost we keep expanding our access to the flow of god's power shout hallelujah i say shout hallelujah we keep expanding our access to the flow of god's power number three is given to the cause of the kingdom of the gospel sorry given to the cause of the gospel as we keep doing that we keep also gaining access to greater manifestations of power particularly as far as kingdom prosperity is concerned it's true giving it's true giving there's no other way 
that is the avenue that God has created. Thou shalt remember the Lord your God for it. Is it that give it the power to get wealth? That one comes by engaging in the covenant. Practical covenant practice. That's what provokes it. So if you look at all of this, you will discover that you don't grow in these graces just by desiring it. You must engage the requirements. Keep the altar of prayer on fire. Keep yourself committed to going after the lost. Keep advancing the kingdom with the resources at your disposal. And you keep seeing yourself increasing in super. Stop being offended in God. It's not your problem. He said, blessed are they who are not offended in me. John was offended in Christ. He lost his head. Refuse to be offended in God. Refuse to be offended in God. He said to Jesus, are you the one to come on show way for another? You had them in the prison. You are all preaching about everywhere. He was offended and he was beheaded. Wake up. No one fights against God and prosper. God is not to blame. We just need to take responsibility. In the precious name of Jesus, you never suffer the humiliation of closed doors again. The paralytic man went through the roof because he must get it. You must get it this month. <laughs> Zacchaeus climbed the sycamore tree to get at Jesus. You must get at him this month. <laughs> My prayer is that no one here will end this month just as any other month. The month of May shall be the beginning of month for you. Very simple question. Do you want to be saved? Simple. Then repent. No one can repent for you. No one can repent for me. What shall we do? He said, repent. And shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. It's yours to repent. It's mine to repent. It's Jesus to save. Jesus can't save anyone until he's willing to repent. Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Then, be thirsty for him. Is your birthright in redemption? It's an automatic gift from God. You don't have to mature for it. No. He matures you. So open up. And ensure, because from what you have heard in teaching today, you are limited. I'm limited without the help of the Holy Spirit. Access to the truth of God's word and empowerment for triumph is impossible without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will never be stranded. You will never be stranded. Do you want to walk in favor? Then be committed to kingdom advancement and divorce. It, there is no two way about it. Seek ye for the kingdom of God, and all these that are dying to get shall be added to you. That is the story of your church. From favor to favor, my God, no struggle, no stress. From today, I decree no more stress or struggle on your life. No more stress or struggle on your life. The greatest event in your life shall be heat free yeah. and shall be stress free. Yeah. They had no wine in that marriage. There are many, many marriages that are wineless. Wine is finished. The job of marriage is over. He said, Whatever it tells you to do, what? Do it. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. A husband loves your wife as Christ loves the church, do it. Why submit your own husband as unto the, unto the Lord? Do it. You won't do it. There's no way you can get wine back. But this time, wine will be restored to every wineless marriage. You want to work in financial fortune? You don't need to know anybody, sir. People have just come down to the natural. They have left their two realm. You don't need to know no man to scale any height. Just know God. Commit to covenant practice. No matter the circumstances on the earth, you will keep flourishing. You will keep flourishing. You will keep flourishing. You will keep flourishing. Can I tell you this? This ministry has never known one downward trend financially in 42 years. One down, no matter what goes on in the world, he said it will supply your needs according to its riches in glory. Your days of lack and want are finally over. So, the ball is in your court and in my court. My prayer is that obedience of faith 
will change your story. Yeah. Every time people go to work, you have committed them to confirm it. You shall be experiencing diverse confirmations of the word in your life. We are not only redeemed as the sheep of his flock, but we are also redeemed as liars to prevail in the battles of life. My God. So every child of God is redeemed a spiritual lion. A lion is said to be strongest among the beasts and turned not away for any. So the days of harassment on your destiny, they are finally over. Yeah. The days of harassment on your destiny, they are finally over. And what is the core characteristic of a lion? Boldness. The righteous as bold as a lion. And what does that connote? Boldness is the trigger for the supernatural. They were speaking boldly in the Lord. The first one is Proverbs 28 verse 1. We will we, give we, we the word of his grace and comfort. No. God says I want to be done by their hands. Acts 14.3 it is that your lion nature consciousness that arouses boldness that puts you in command of the supernatural. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. It puts you what? In, in command, command of the supernatural. It puts you in command of the supernatural. That the conscious of your lion nature puts you in command of the supernatural. Puts you in command of the supernatural. So we're not lions by title. We are lions by redemption. We are spiritual lions. With capacity to command the supernatural at will. Capacity to command the supernatural at will. Capacity to command the supernatural at will. With capacity to command the supernatural at will. We were involved in an accident one time and then the car was racing towards the median of the express. And my wife said, I said, no, no, once he said, no. I'm not going to hear that thing. He stopped there, sir. Stop there. Amen. We have just lost one engine in the airplane. Relax. He turned back to Lagos. Relax, no, relax. <laughs> relax. He turned back to Lagos. The lion as bold as a lion. The righteous as bold as a lion. Seem to be doing me all around town. You, you, you are to stand your ground against the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Could we ever enter or Tahir as a sheep? We'll be slaughtered the following day. We entered as violent lions. If you close the place, you are dead. Stay off. And not break Tanaro Tassinia. We have carried this sheep-like nature for too long. You can't carry a sheep-like nature to battle. You won't return. You won't return. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. Revelation 5.5. 5. We saw Jesus here in this picture. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seas thereof. We were still talking about verse 6. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Who is the lamb? Who is the lamb? As I have been slain, having seven horns and Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth unto all the earth. The lamb. He was slain as a slave, as a sheep. He arose as a lion. And as he is in heaven now, so are we in this world. So we are no longer sheep in this world for the slaughter. We are now lions in his resurrected state. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. 
It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Every harassment of the wicked one is over in your life. Every harassment of the wicked one. We are not going to be preaching. We are going to be teaching. Teaching. So you can receive the vaccine of the world and come out of that bandage because you are coming out. You are coming out. The prescription of this great physician covers all issues of life, including our health and wholeness. He came to give us life and life in its perfect state. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. The days of shame and reproach, they are over in your life. Yeah. Let me first define his bound. This is the compendium of the great physician's prescriptions. The word. The word. He sent his word and healed them. The word. Doctors write their prescriptions in papers and give to go to go and look for chemists or pharmacists to buy the word. This is the great physician's master prescription, the balm in Gilead. If you watch the Jesus' ministry, you'll find out that his healing ministries were orchestrated by his word. We just read Matthew 4, 23. He was teaching in their synagogues and healing. I was going to say, Jesus. Luke 5, 17 he was teaching, and the power of God was oozing forth from the world, healing them. Proverbs 4, 20-22, My son, attend to my word. Give ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they shall be life to them that have it. Find them and health to all their flesh. The word. I read an article in a magazine that's, uh, that magazine is said uh, titled The New Wine. February 14, 1983. And it was an article on the power of the world. There was a testimony of a woman there who was reading a book titled Face Up with a Miracle by Bob Mumford. She was in a laundry on the wheelchair she didn't know when she stood up from the wheelchair and went to the sink rinsing his clothes he looked back and the wheelchair is behind something entered her reading that book her little scar palm put on the others that's how Powerful that balm is. The word. What's in this world? Healing health and wholeness. When you find it, no one put it under your pillow, on your table. On your bookshelf, it shall be health to them that find them, 
health to all their flesh. Life to them that find them. And health to all their flesh. You will find it. There's an unveiling that unleashes that healing virtue. But what's in the world? Light. And no degree of darkness can resist the authority of light. So when you are under any operation of the devil and light breaks forth, darkness packs out. Come on now. John 1 and 1 to 5. In the beginning was the world. The world was God and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In that world was life. And that life is the light of man. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended him now. Verse 9, that was the true light that lighted every man. So it lightens people. So the powers of darkness just lose their grip. What's in the world? The light that shines in darkness, that darkness can't do nothing about. So when it comes in, boom, that's it. What's in the world that heals divine nature, which is immune to sickness and disease? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, verse 4, whereby is given unto so, to us this exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So this book communicates divine nature. So the more loaded one is with the world of life, the more immune to sickness and disease he becomes. Divine nature. What's in this world? The stone, the chief cornerstone. It turns your flesh to stone. Stones don't get sick. Praise God. You come against stone, you are broken to pieces. The stone falls on you, you are granted to power. Matthew 21, verse 42. The stone, did you not never read in the scriptures? The stone with the builders rejected. The same has become the head of the corner. This is the lost doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Whosoever comes against this stone shall be broken to pieces. From whomsoever this stone shall fall, it shall be granted to powder. And who is the stone? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The world. Any agent of the wicked that comes against you, your family, your health, your affairs, shall be broken to pieces. Now, all of these provisions only become a reality with faith. Blessed is she that believeth. It shall be performed all these things which are told her from the Lord. You can't realize the reality of the truth without faith. Jesus, the truth. Jesus, the light. Jesus, the the chief cornerstone, Jesus, the very nature of God. God to Nazareth, he couldn't impact on them and he marveled at their unbelief. No word from the Lord ever comes true without faith. So let's check through healing wonders of faith in a few minutes. Some healing wonders in faith. Healing is the covenant right of every child of God. 
but accessible only by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. That, oh, those blind men came to Jesus, have mercy on us. He said, do you believe? Question. That I descend on my to do this? They said, yeah, Lord. Now, receive according to your faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. So, your healing and my healing is according to our faith. Current faith, though, not past tense faith. Faith is, not faith was. Current faith. Current faith. Faith on fire. Not yesterday faith, not last year faith. Matthew 9, 27 to 28. The people of Nazareth missed out because of their unbelief. Mark 6, 6 to 7. No one can tap into the healing virtue without faith. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. That fills my soul. Something has happened, and now I know He touched me and me. Now, watch, 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 watch. This is the mystery. Who had believed that report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's how you come to church, and no one lays hand on you. You are just healed. Your faith jumps up. His hand set forth. When your faith comes alive, his hand stretches forth to touch you and something. That family ravaged with tuberculosis. Four of them, husband, wife, two sons. They were healed without anybody touching them. Why? Faith came alive. I've come to the place of solution. And then God's hand searched forth. Somebody's been touched now by what you're hearing. If you believe it, if you believe it, if you believe it, come on now. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know what joy that filled my soul. Something happened, something has happened. And now I know. He touched me and he made. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched my soul. As I was hearing, listening to my Savior, somebody touched my soul. Wake up! He's still touching people right now. Whose faith? He's been stared up. That is your bad right. It's not your ambition. He paid the price for it. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is it. That woman went behind and touched the hem of his garment. Jesus said, Thy faith has drawn virtue from me, which has made thee whole. We can't draw virtue from the world without faith. Look it. 40 to 48. But faith is not just believing God. Faith is obeying God to prove that we believe him so we can commit him to make good his promise. Take this prescription. It will do wonders in your life that will be undeniable. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and understanding. Get to the point you understand your right to healing, health, and wholeness. And then your faith taps into that virtue and it makes people whole. 
while faith is domiciled in the heart, in the heart for with the heart man believes it requires the tongue to manifest with the heart we believe with the mouth confession is made for our rescue how you doing praise god i'm middle well 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 i don't know what i'm feeling i'm feeling one kind and two kind you shall have whatsoever you say there was one of our daughters here who had me say if anybody asks you how far now regarding your expectation for the fruit of the womb tell whosoever god has done it and so one woman that was monitoring her life called her that morning how are you my daughter I say everything now. I say, God has done it. <laughs> my chest, my chest, my chest. On the other side. On the other side. I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that none of adversaries can resist nor gain say. Stop talking sideways. Stop talking in the middle of the road. Psalm 81 verse 10 to 14. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. Oh, we brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide. You saw how wide Moses' mouth was in Egypt. Pharaoh! Let my people go. No diplomatic arrangement. Pharaoh. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. But my people will not happen to me. They are very civilized. And neither will none of mine. So I gave them up unto their own heart loss. They want to be respected. I can't talk like Papa. You know, life is, uh, can be risky. And they walked in their own counsels. Now, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. And Israel had walked in my way. I said, Open your mouth wide. You open it one quarter. Open it wide. He said, I should soon have subdued your enemies. And turn my hand against the adversaries. You want to silence your enemies? Open your mouth. For the stranger shall hear. And fade away from their hiding places. If they don't hear, they won't fade. You'll be struggling with them. In the early days of our ministry, someone came into the office. He said, was there any noise in his house? He said, you are too quiet. Get there and be saying, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hosanna. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Hos he came back. He said, Did you hear the voice again? I said, Nature of boss vacuum. You left the state for them. They will occupy it. So I burst into tongues that they don't understand. They don't know where I'm coming from. They planted tables, alicantum, about. I open my eyes in the night. I speak to the atmosphere. They clear off. Open your mouth wide. And they will feel it. It's what we condemn with our mouth that God confirms into testimonies. No weapon formed against you and me shall prosper. But every tongue that you and me we condemn I mean uh, 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 and Isaiah chapter 50, 54 verse 17 no weapon formed against you shall prosper but very strong it shall rise against your judgment you shall condemn this is the heritage of the children of God and the allegiance of me said the Lord so you condemn I confirm I can't condemn for you my name is love you condemn and I confirm. You condemn and I confirm. You condemn and I confirm. Now, say to that challenge on your head, you are condemned. Say to it now, you are condemned. You are illegal. You don't belong here. I condemn you. You are a weapon formed against me. You are not permitted to prosper. You must give up right now. I condemn you. 
I condemn your source. Come and say it with all confidence. I condemn this weakness in and out. I condemn. I condemn you, foul spirit. In Jesus' name. You know something? Our faith answers in heaven. It's our tongues that the enemy surrender to. You believe in your heart. You say to this mountain. People have missed the two. They are not the same. God won't speak to the mountain for you. He won't speak to the mountain for me. If you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and come to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart. That's fair. You shall have whatsoever you say, because I will confirm it. Believe in your heart. I'll speak to the obstacles. And I turn them to miracles. Believe in your heart and speak to the obstacles. And I'll turn them to miracles. They said the vitals of our daughter was gone down. I sat in my office. I said, Jesus, there must be a way out. Come and see the world. He said, son, daddy, it's a way out. Come and see him. One, two, three, four. <laughs> awesome God. There are many people that will not go back with that sickness tonight. Yeah. If you refuse to doubt in your heart that the price has been fully paid for your total health, It's illegal to be in the center of buying and selling of devils and their agents. But it's not just speaking, oh, but speaking boldly. Not here. Acts 14, verse 3. They are both there speaking boldly in the law, which gave witness to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. It's not speaking casually, boldly, confidently, unshakably. Somebody's miracle children have just arrived. The battle is over. This is the answer to all health problems of mankind. The balm in Gilead. A woman was reading uh, my book, When Invisible Battles, a French woman, the French edition in DRC. And this woman has been followed by some evil forces. It will feed people following him, following her. Can't see them. She will get near a breakthrough, it will break down. Get near another. He got through half reading that book. And then someone like, something like a human figure just walked out of her body. And she became free. Light will dispel any darkness. No matter how gross that darkness may be. Light will dispel any darkness. I wrote an article, 1983, you can walk out on the devil. Is what metamorphosed to sit and get lost. There is no, sir. When is the devil? Because he's an embodiment of darkness. Light. What do I call it? So you find anointed people struggling with the devil, you know. Light. Light. <laughs> One madman uh, was set free in a crusade, 1979. And then the evil spirits came back on him in the camp where we were. And so they were struggling with him, all the men of most who were struggling. And so they called me, Brother David, there's a major problem here. I said, what is it? He said, God, they have first despised them. Is this a major problem? Said, Leave, lose him. Leave him. Because we were holding, he was throwing them around. 
And I pointed my long fingers. You know, my fingers are very long. I said, the angels that left their forces kept on their habitation. They are kept under chains in darkness. What are you doing here? <sighs> All the devils left are the arrow of light. Somebody's walking free. Yeah. You are the one, let me hear your loudest. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Because everybody's health issue is settled finally. This is your month of full restoration of health. Come on, give God thanks. Give God thanks, everybody. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. And give God thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Somebody here tonight, whether here in Canaan land or any of our viewing centers across Lagos and Nota, You need to be born again to be a partaker of the healing health.
Thank、you 